Good morning from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm Kip Twitchell, and today I'm going to talk about what's the big idea. The big idea behind business events is that it could radically simplify so much of the uh, business world systems that we uh, have used for years and years, decades, centuries now, to keep track of our finances, to understand where the business is going, what the business is doing, how the business is working. Uh, let's start with uh, the big idea. Let's start first by talking about uh, an individual named Luca Pacioli. Back in 1494, Luca uh, was the first person to document uh, what's called bookkeeping today. Uh, it was a very simple little cycle of recording down each transaction. I would call them business events today and recording uh, who was involved, the amounts involved, what was involved. So taking track of, of each transaction, each thing that occurred. The next step in the process though was that having a whole long list of transactions is not very useful. And so what would happen, what Luca Pacioli suggested should happen, is that each day the, the bookkeeper should take those lists of transactions and accumulate them, summarize them to create balances that reflected the position of the organization. Um, those balances became what's called the balance sheet. Uh, changes between balance sheets. A balance sheet shows what's happened at how the status is as of a point in time. The changes between two balance sheets are what we now call the income statement, uh, sometimes called a profit and loss statement. So it was how things had changed between two balance sheet periods. Uh, that process of taking those transactions and creating balances is a quite a human intensive process before the uh, advent of uh, calculators. Um, it would take a human to add up the transactions. So the way they would go after doing that to make it the most efficient, you wouldn't take today's transactions and add them to all the other transactions that had ever occurred. You take today's transactions and add them to yesterday's balances. And that would give you today's balances. And then tomorrow you'd record tomorrow's transactions. And at the end of the day you'd take those transactions and add them to today's balances. That little process of rolling balances forward meant that the amount of addition you had to do, the calculation that had to be added each time, was minimized to the, uh, the limited set, the, the most minimal amount of calculation that had to be done. Well, let's fast forward a few centuries, right? The advent of uh, modern computing technology comes along and this, this whole system now has become accounting, bookkeeping, it's very consistent um, process, set of procedures that are followed around the world, a whole set of businesses. Auditing has been involved now, been created as a way of making sure it's done according to the, the same pattern for everyone. Everyone uses the same definition of what a transaction is and uh, so that it's comparable across organizations. When computers came along, it was a very simple thing to automate this little process because it's very systematic. You do the same thing every day and computers are very good at adding things up. One thing that was done though when computing started, computing resources were very expensive and very difficult to program and such and so there was a, a lot of emphasis spent on minimizing the use of computing resources. Well, the one thing about this system is that the set of transactions added to yesterday's balances minimize the amount of computing resources. And so the system was already tuned because it had been tuned for humans to do the work. The system was tuned to minimize the amount of computing resources used to do the same work. So we effectively automated the system in the same way it had been done manually without changing um, much in the way of how it worked from the beginning. All right, we're gonna go now fast forward a few more decades to uh, 1982, an individual, uh, here's a picture of him, his name is William McCarthy. He wrote an article uh, um, in the midst of other articles that were being written at the time, and he, he posited, he said, you know, with a world of shared databases, why do we have a financial system at all? All these transactions that occurred in the organization, you should be able to add those up at any point in time and create the balance that's of interest to anyone in the organization. And it doesn't just have to be an accounting balance. It could be any kind of balance. People could add up these transactions in thousands of different ways that might be much more interesting and much more useful to them than just the simple classified accounting uh, things that we have. It was an interesting article. 
I studied this in school nearly 30 years ago. The, the problem is that still computing resources are scarce. And so simply taking and adding up these transactions still, uh, even with uh, technology in the 1980s, 1990s, it still required too much computing capacity for large organizations to, to do this. Certainly for maybe my personal transactions, I could do that. I could just keep my transactions. I could probably keep all the transactions I had for my entire life and uh, add up and get to whatever my, my checking account balance might be today or my savings account balance or my anything else because I just don't have that many as a person. Although I've got a lot, uh, my PC probably would not be able to do the work. But when you get to, to businesses, the transaction volumes are just that much greater and, and we, can't, we can't do those kinds of things. So what happened, this idea has driven me to, to think about this through the course of my, uh, my career. How could we simplify the system? Because once we make balances, we've, a balance answers a question only as of a point in time. It answers one specific question as of that point in time. Uh, the balances for yesterday are only useful to tell you what the position was yesterday. And they're only the things that I decided to add up on the transactions. There are other things that I could have done about the transaction that I decided not to add up and keep a balance for. So they only answer one specific question as of one point in time. So every time we make a balance, we duplicate the data we have in the transactions in effect. And every time you create a balance, you create what's a reconciliation effectively. To make sure that that balance is accurate, you have to reconcile it which means testing that it actually includes all the transactions that it was supposed to include and that it is the same balance or the, 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 the transactions added up a different way to make a different balance equals the same thing. It's a, it's a pure test of accuracy, making sure that the information we have is, is correct. So this reconciliation problem becomes prolific the more and more balances that are made in an organization. So balances help us to keep data in a very efficient manner to answer questions as of a point in time and yet balances also, the more balances we make, it creates more and more reconciliations that are needed in the organization. This is one of the great conundrums that I've struggled with through my career. So what is the answer to this? Well, one thing that we know is computing capacity has continued to become more and more available. Moore's law continues and, and the compute capacity doubles every 18 months or so. Even though the data volumes continue to increase, this increased computing capacity is making things possible now that were not possible years ago. By maintaining lower level balances, we can make this process of updating from yesterday's transactions to today's balances uh, still something that gives us the efficiency that we need for the balances involved, but does not burden us with maintaining so many balances in the organization in order to answer all the different questions that there are.